We've all heard the phrase, water is the new oil for the 21st century. However, given how much conflict we had and how much expense we had over oil in the 20th century, is that really true? Well, in just the last decade, we've had almost 500 water conflicts, more than half of which resulted in human casualties. It's also a very widespread problem with 3 billion people facing water scarcity for at least part of the year, a number that continues to grow. It's also extremely expensive with a quarter trillion dollars in economic losses every year due to inadequate water supply or sanitation. To increase the water supply, we need sustainable solutions. Desalination has been proposed as one such solution. The most energy efficient and widespread of the desalination technologies is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis uses a salt rejecting membrane that only allows pure water to go through and is powered by a high pressure pump. My team and I have been working on a new variant of reverse osmosis called batch reverse osmosis, where we vary the applied pressure over time to exactly match the osmotic pressure, thus dramatically improving performance. We do this with some clever engineering, some of which uh, in a simplified manner involves a high pressure piston tank, recirculation, and other process innovations. We can map out the performance of back reverse osmosis with pressure versus the recovery ratio, where recovery ratio is your fraction desalinated comparing your pure water produced divided by your incoming water. A traditional reverse osmosis process uses a very high excess pressure, well above the minimum osmotic pressure, which is increasing over time as we increase our recovery ratio. It so happens that when we graph these two axes against one another, the areas actually directly equal energy. And so below this osmotic pressure curve is actually our least work for accomplishing any desalination process. A traditional reverse osmosis process has a lot of sources of wasted energy. However, in a batch process, we dynamically over time vary the applied pressure to follow the osmotic pressure curve, thus dramatically decreasing our energy needs. If we create a contour plot comparing the applied, um, the feed salinity uh, versus the recovery ratio, we see dramatic savings compared to the traditional state-of-the-art processes which already use energy recovery devices. And you can see here some substantial gains on the order of 20% or more for seawater. This process innovation also reduces membrane fouling by cycling the salinity, which can reduce inorganic scaling and also makes it harder for microorganisms to survive on the membrane surface. We are working to implement this technology in South America, including in Colombia, as well as making plans for doing so in Kenya. I'm Professor David Warsinger from Purdue University. Thank you very much.